Good afternoon, everybody. So today we're going to talk about uh, the advanced visualization capability that came out in 10.2.1, was enhanced in 10.2.1.1, um, and uh, is uh, now available for all reports in Cognos. When it first came out, it was just available for active reports. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll talk about what they are. We'll talk about why uh, you care, <laughs> what makes them valuable to you, um, as opposed to um, what you already have out of the box with um, charts and maps from Cognos. Uh, we'll talk about this notion of the fact that they're extensible and why, why would we call them extensible. We'll talk about how you get them, because when you actually install these, uh, uh, these versions, uh, you don't actually get any visualizations with the install kit. You actually have to go and download them. And then we're going to move right into demonstrations, and we're going to create uh, an active report with a visualization. We're going to use Cognos Workspace Advanced, and we're going to create two reports, um, one with a relational package and one with a dimensional package. And then we're going to add uh, some visualizations to a Cognos workspace so we can see what that looks like. And then with any time left, we'll take questions uh, from you guys. So do be sure to put some questions into the chat window as we go. And we'll uh, read some of those off. Jesse will read them uh, at, at the end, and we'll answer as many as we can as time allows. So that's what we're going to do. Let's get to it. So what are advanced visualizations? Well, they are uh, a new set uh, ways to express your data that are in addition to the whole chart library uh, that's already part of your product, or in addition to the maps uh, library that is already part of your product. So this is a, yet another option uh, for me to put graphical content onto a report page, whether that's an active report or whether that's a report that you uh, wrote uh, and view in Cognos Workspace Advanced or Report Studio, um, and even if you wanted to view uh, those reports or pieces of those reports in a workspace. It all works now in uh, the 10.2.1 and forward. Uh, it's based on a new graphics engine that's incorporated uh, in the install called the RAVE engine, which stands for Rapidly Adaptive Visualization Engine. The RAVE engine is embedded in the Cognos server and runs, and when you run a report, it renders the object, and it presents that to you, just like it renders a chart when you run a report and presents that to you. The other thing, though, that the RAVE engine uh, does is it embeds itself in any active report MHT file that uses a visualization, so that those visualizations are actually rendered on the fly within the MHT, so they're not pre-rendered. Um, uh, aficionados of active reports know that um, all the charts in your active reports are actually pre-rendered and contained in the MHD file. Not so with visualizations. Instead, the instructions for the visualization are embedded in the MHT, and the RAVE engine is embedded in the MHT, so that those visualizations are actually generated live uh, uh, when you see them uh, when running the uh, active report. And that introduces the ability to uh, introduce animations into the visualizations. It also ultimately will reduce your MHT file size in that it takes a lot less space to store the RAVE engine plus the instructions for the visualizations than it does to store all of the pre-rendered charts very often in an MHT file. So it helps with the size um, and therefore the speed of your active report. And we'll actually, we'll see that um, when we do our active report. It's based on uh, something called the grammar of graphics. Um, which is, uh, ultimately becomes a programming language, uh, if you will, called BizJSON. So some of the programmers in the audience may know of JSON. BizJSON is a variant of that that's very specifically to uh, express uh, an advanced visualization. Um, so this untethers you from the fixed library of Cognos charts in two ways. One, it's a collection of new visualizations that go beyond what the library of charts does. That's number one. Number two is um, these are crowdsourced, uh, and uh, people create them and post them to a website called the analyticszone.com. That's analytics with an S zone.com. And when you go there, you can download these visualizations. So um, they're extensible from the point of view of uh, you can go get new ones and add them to your Cognos environment as uh, ad hoc. They're also extensible because you can uh, uh, change them with a downloadable tool, which I'll talk about in a moment. But first of all, why do I care? Why is, how is this an improvement? Well, um, you know, as, as we write reports, the whole point of writing reports is to highlight 
interesting, exceptional data, right, to allow me to make a business decision. And usually the business decisions I have to make are about things that are not going normally. So they're either not going normally good, and I want to find out why so I can do some more of that, or they're not going normally in a poor way, and I want to find out why so I can fix that. So visualizations, uh, as opposed to, let's say, tabular data, are a critical part of reporting because the whole point of a visualization is to zero you in, catch your eye, and have you see what is exceptional in terms of the data being presented. So having a whole new library of things that will do that for you, a whole new library that includes things like tree maps, network maps, uh, on uh, heat maps, uh, those are all types of visualizations you could download. Um, those can help you zero in on anomalies, on opportunities, either for continuing good stuff or for addressing things that are, are, are not going well before they become a big problem. Different sets of data require different types of visualizations to provide you with the best insight, right, to catch your eye and focus you in on the proper way. So the more that you have, the more options you have, right, the, the better your reporting can be in terms of highlighting these things. Now, standard Cognos charts, which are, uh, as you probably know, bar charts and column charts, pie charts, um, those sorts of things, you know, are not necessarily optimal in terms of highlighting things in every data set. So this capability, this visualization tool that's been added to your toolbox in Report Studio and Cognos Workspace Advanced, this capability right, allows you to go beyond that. So you can add, you can still use the Cognos charts, and you can mix and match Cognos charts and visualizations on the same report. Uh, it gives you more options. Oh, and by the way, there are visualizations that are bar charts and column charts and pie charts. So if you wanted to stick just with visualizations because, for example, you do a lot of active reports and you like this notion of animation, I'm going to demonstrate, well, you can animate those charts too. Uh, but you can mix and match the standard charts and the, uh, the visualization. So it gives you an option to highlight exceptional data and therefore overall remove your reporting and ultimately right, increase the ROI on your DI investment. Okay, the extensibility thing, right, is that you can download the ones that others are creating. So you're not stuck with the ones you create, which implies that you can create some yourself, and that is absolutely true. Uh, there is a utility available on this same website, analyticszone.com, that you can download. Now, for most folks, it's going to be so you can modify one of the existing ones, as opposed to start from scratch. However, it is absolutely possible for you to start from scratch. Um, with this tool. But the notion is this tool allows you to, uh, uh, if you desire to, you don't have to, but if you want to, you can download this tool and you can edit the biz JSON programming language that describes the visualization. And then you can package up your visualization, upload it to your Cognos environment, and then folks can add your visualization to their reports. So there's a, a visualization customizer that will uh, download. I'll show you how to get that in a moment. Um, and I'll also show you how you download the 30 or so visualizations that have already been posted to the analyticszone.com. Now, I know that IBM has some additional uh, visualizations available and uh, that are not yet posted on the analyticszone.com. And if you email Jesse after this um, webinar or you indicate in the chat window that you'd like them, we can uh, go ahead and provide you with a zip file of uh, those visualizations that are not yet ready for download. Uh, do keep in mind that all the visualizations uh, uh, are, are, you know, subject to all of the, the warranty disclaimers that are normally uh, provided for downloadable stuff, right? So, you know, they'll probably work. Um, all the ones we've tested do work, um, but, you know, your mileage may vary, right? That's what happens when you get free things. But we're happy to share them with you. Um, this is what the customizer looks like. I'll actually launch this and uh, um, show you. Uh, I'll talk you through it a little bit. Uh, this uh, webinar is not specifically intended to teach you how to use it. Um, you know, if you are interested in a webinar on this JSON and the customizer, let us know by the chat window. We'll be happy to you know take that feedback. Um, and if there's enough interest, we'll put together a, a, an hour on it and we'll we'll deep dive into that. Uh, but I will do a quick show yet uh, on today. So how do you get visualizations? Well, you first upgrade to a, a, a version of Cognos that supports visualization. That's minimally 10.2.1.0. There are two fix packs already to that environment. 
Uh, the current version is 10.2.1.2. .2 .2. Um, at a minimum, you should go to 10.2.1.1 because it's the dot one release that enabled you to embed visualizations in all reports. The dot zero release only supported visualizations in active reports. Okay, so uh, we recommend that you go at least to the dot one. Quite frankly, I recommend you just go to the dot two um, and get current. If you're going to upgrade, there's no reason not to get all the way current. Is my fault. Once you're on a supported uh, uh, version of Cognos, you can go ahead and go to the analytics zone. You must register before you can download anything. So you do need to register. There's no cost to it. Um, and I don't get any uh, uh, spam uh, uh, from it. So it's a, it's a, a, a low risk uh, registration. Once you're there, you can go to the visualizations component of the website and you can download visualizations and you can also download the visualization customizer. Um, and there are roughly 30 visualizations available even today. I checked this morning before the webinar. We'll actually log in and take a look at that. Now, I mentioned earlier, I'll mention it again. When you upgrade, you get no built-in visualization. You, your visualization library is empty. Uh, you can always look at what's in your visualization library because there's a new library tab in the uh, Cognos administration screens on the Cognos Connection portal. So when you launch administration, you'll notice with this release um, that there's a, a bunch of new tabs. There's a multi-tenancy tab, there's a mobile tab, and there's a library tab. And specifically, the library is all the list of the visualizations that you have available. It also allows you to put security on those visualizations if you want to limit their use in any way. Um, but this is where you go to manage the visualizations that are in your uh, environment. And when you first install this release, this screen is empty. And so to start using visualizations, your first step has to be to download one or more and upload them to your Cognos. So I'll show you how to do that uh, in our demonstration. Now you've got a section, uh, a collection of visualizations that are part of your library. Now you can use them in reports. The way you use them in reports is you add a visualization from the toolbox. So the picture, the screenshot here um, is Report Studio. Uh, Cognos Workspace Advanced has the same tool and it works the same way. It launches a wizard. You can see the, the wizard starting page right there that shows you the contents of your library and allows you to pick the visualization you'd like to add to your report. You want to add three visualizations? Drag the visualization tool on three times. No different than adding multiple lists or cross tabs or charts or maps and so on to your report. So there's a brand new tool. It's got a, a, a quick wizard that's basically the which one do you want. Um, and then it drops it in and then there's drop zones. Uh, there's like a series and a cat category and a measure drop zone. It's very similar once you've added it to your report to configuring uh, a standard Cognos chart. The important thing to remember with visualizations though is every drop zone must be filled in. In other words, with a standard chart, I can fill in just a category and a measure and the chart will render. Not so with a visualization. Visualizations require that all your, uh, your drop zones have at least one value in them before they'll render. At least all the ones so far. So let's stop talking about it and let's actually take a look at the one. So I'm going to first start out by adding a visualization to an active report. Then I'm going to go to a standard report, you know, a non-active report. Uh, using Cognos Workspace Advanced and add the visualization there as well. I'm going to actually do that twice. I'm going to do that once with a relational package that'll be, uh, uh, and I'll use a different visualization than I'll use in the active report. Then I'm going to use the same visualization, but I'm going to switch to a different package. I'm going to switch to a uh, dimensional package, and we're going to look at how drill downs work with visualizations. Then I'm going to take those uh, reports that I just created, and I'm going to create a quick Cognos Workspace so we can see what visualizations look like in a workspace. So that's uh, the demo that we're going to do. So let me get to it. So I'm going to close my slides. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you my administration page. So if I go to my library on my environment. You'll see I've already loaded three visualizations there. But if, you won't, if you're just getting into this, you haven't loaded any, you'll actually start on the um, Analytics zone. So here's uh, the analyticszone.com. I've just uh, I've typed that in for um, simplicity to get here. Um, you have to register, and then you have to sign in in order to download anything from this site. 
So I have registered. If you haven't, click on the sign in button and then down here do the join now. It's free process. But I have to um, log in and put in my password. And now that I'm signed in, I can download things. So once you're logged in, what you want to do is you want to get to the uh, visualization section. So if you hover over downloads and trials, down will drop a menu, and the first item on the menu is visualization. So you're going to want to click that. Now, when you get to the visualization section, you're shown right away the collection of visualizations available for download. So, uh, you know, there's things, um, there is a download all the visualizations at once option. So you download one object, and this gives you all 31 visualizations that are available. It's actually all 30, because this is one of the 31. Um, so, so you have to unzip this. Now, inside that zip file is a bunch of other zip files. Don't unzip twice. So unzip this, get the list of zip files. Those are what you upload to your library. If you download just the area chart um, or just uh, the box plot or just the packed bubbles, um, those come down as zip files. You don't unzip those individual files. Those are what you upload. You upload them um, compressed. You don't unzip um, and upload the pieces parts. Okay? But you download them from here. Now, if you're interested in getting the utility, and downloading the utility that allows you to customize uh, these visualizations, you need to click on the utility link here on the left, and you'll download the utility. Here's also where you'll download the documentation for the utility. Don't forget to download that as well. So this download button gets you the utility. Um, that comes down zipped, uh, and you have to uncompress that. And there's no installer. Once you've uncompressed it, you're ready to rock. You just double click on the jar file, uh, and, uh, and you go. So you download the utility by clicking on the utility, okay? You uh, uh, download the visualizations by uh, clicking on one or more of the visualizations, or you can get all of them uh, uh, at once by doing the all visualization. So if you did click on all of them and you got them all down and you unzip the file that comes down from there, then you will have a collection of zip files that look like this. So packed, by, uh, packed bubble chart, there's your column charts for your stack and your 100% stack column, and this is just your standard column. Um, there's the bubble chart, the box plot, and so on. So all the ones that you saw as I scrolled up and down the analytic zone, you know, okay, they're, they're down here now as samples. So this, is, you know, I got downloaded one zip because I downloaded them all at once. I unpacked that zip, and that gave me this collection of individual zips. But I now want to upload to my administration screen. So they're sitting on my desktop, right? They're, they're just, they're on my PC. I'm not remoted to my Cognos server. That's not necessary. Um, I've downloaded these to my PC. I'm going to go now back to my library tab on the administration. I'm going to click up here on the import visualizations button. I'll click that. It'll let me browse now on my PC to where I have stored the visualizations and let me pick the visualizations I want to import. I can only pick one at a time. So um, I'm going to just drag, uh, I'll just import a couple. So you can import them like that. I'll just get a couple on um, and add them to, not important which ones really here. But are you going to want to do this to all of the ones you downloaded that you'd like to make available? Once you've got them listed here, you can click the import button. It imports all of them. Um, if you are replacing an existing one, you can check the box here so it'll just auto overwrite. But ultimately, you're going to get one or more visualizations in your library just like I have. Now that you've done that, you can begin to write reports that use these visualizations. So these are the ones that will come up in the wizard when I drag the visualization tool out from my toolbox. Now, if you also downloaded the customizer, when you unpack the customizer uh, zip file, you'll see it, it has a, a, a property file, a jar file, and a bunch of folders. Now, you unpack this in any folder, and you double click on the jar file, and it will launch the visualization customizer. And I'm going to do that right now uh, and launch it here. So this is the UI for the visualization customizer. And again, my goal today is not to customize the visualization and teach you about that and this JSON. It's merely to show you this quickly so you have an idea of if you downloaded it, how you might go about playing with it. 
So I've launched the visualization customizer by double clicking on that jar file. I do file open, and any one of those visualization zips I downloaded, I can open here. So I'm gonna go ahead and open, um, open up uh, uh, the network chart. So I'll open that guy up, and uh, I don't know what that message was about. Um, but here is uh, the VizJSON code. Now, did you ever wonder how the the icons for uh, 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 in Report Studio, when you drag them on and it shows you like an empty chart with bars on it, where that came from and where the labels and the data to generate those bars comes from? Well, in visualizations, it's actually embedded in the VizJSON. So, you know, the, the fifth edition, sixth edition, seventh edition that you see over here, so there's the sixth edition entry, seventh edition, eighth edition entry. Well, there, that data that renders this guy, which becomes the default rendering when you add it to your report, that's actually data embedded in the definition of the visualization. Um, and then you get into the grammar, and you, you talk, there's different elements of the grammar, and there's different uh, um, uh, properties for each thing. Like there's a shadow, and the shadow has a color. Here's a font, and this is the font size in bold. There's a default alignment, and so on. Um, there's stuff in here about uh, the uh, axes, if this is an axis-oriented chart. You know, the fill is transparent. So you're really describing with this JSON the visualization. Um, and then the Rave Engine renders based on your description. And over here is uh, um, a rendering of what my description says. So as I change it over here on the left, it updates over here on the right. I can also package with this, um, and I uh, um, can then create a new zip file, which I can then upload to my library. So that, in a nutshell, is what the visualization customizer thing is all about. So that's the, the quickie on the customizer. So here is my library full of uh, visualizations that I'd like to have my users embed in reports. Now I'd like to write some reports. So I'm going to launch back into uh, my Cognos Connection side and out of administration, and I'm going to go uh, in as an author and write some reports. So in my My Folders, I have a, a folder, and I've got a couple of starter reports. Just for the interest of time, um, I've got an active report starter that I'm going to edit, and I'm going to add the visualization to a partially written active report, um, because this isn't our active reports webinar. So I'm only going to do uh, the piece that's uh, visualization specific. We do have an active reports webinar. It's available out on YouTube. It's also available by going to our website. You can uh, access it there. So active report underway. Uh, I have in this active report a, uh, a button bar up here that allows me to, to select regions. So this would be a data button bar. I have a second data button bar that allows me to select a couple of different product lines. And right now, my selections here um, uh, uh, will select uh, a list to show that gives me information about countries, revenue, and gross profit uh, for the selected product line and the selected region. Okay, so that's already in and working. and um, um, runs uh, fairly quickly, so I'll show you what it looks like. We're going to add a visualization to that, and that visualization is going to uh, uh, sit over here on the left-hand side uh, uh, in this space. Uh, so Asia Pack, there's my Asia Pack countries for camping equipment, and there's my revenue and gross profit. That's the same, uh, but for golf equipment, there's my Northern Europe data and so on. And my goal is to add a visualization here, uh, and I'm going to use something called a packed bubble. And that's going to render uh, information. I'm going to go ahead and render uh, revenue uh, in my packed bubble, and it's going to be by the product type. Um, so uh, some new information that's not in my list. So it's going to break uh, revenue down by product type uh, and by country. Um, and it's going to filter to the region and the product line uh, in my buttons. So that's my goal. That's my task. We close that, and I'm going to do it. So to add a visualization to a report, I go to the toolbox in either Cognos Workspace Advanced or Report Studio. Since this is an active report, it's got to be Report Studio. I can't do active reports in the CWA. Um, visualization, I'll drop it into the space where I want it to appear. Up will come my, uh, my, uh, uh, my wizard that allows me to see the visualizations that have been loaded into my library. And I'm going to go ahead and click on Packed Bubble. I'll click OK. 
that will drop the packed bubble into my report and uh, allow me to uh, put data into the drop zones. So I'm going to select my drop zone area. I actually have a query that is already part of this report that I'm going to reuse. So just like any other object, I can reuse queries on visualizations that I already have out there. There's a query I'm going to, I'm going to reuse. So I'm going to add items to it from my product types query. Um, my measure is going to be revenue. Uh, my, uh, uh, I'm going to have each bubble represent a product type. And I'm going to have um, the uh, product types broken down by reseller country. Now, I'd like to filter this data by the region and the product line, uh, right, that the user selects up in the buttons of the top. So I have to have those be part of my object, but just not visible. So I'm going to drop those into the extra categories drop zones. So that way I can use them to control the data rendered in the visualization, but they're not going to be visible on the visualization. So my visualization is actually all, all set up. That's really all there is to it. Not a heck of a lot different than doing a column chart or a pie chart in terms of drag it, drop it, see it. Um, the difference is, of course, it's a clustered uh, uh, set of bubbles, not a column chart, right? It's, 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 it's a different visualization than what I have in my chart engine. Now, the other thing that uh, active report aficionados have already noticed, but, uh, uh, but I'm going to mention anyway, is that I did not drop my visualization into a data deck. So if you're an active report author, you know that in order to present um, a chart uh, to your user based on the values they pick in a prompt like those buttons at the top, you have to place that chart inside a data deck. And then you need to use the variables that the two buttons are populating to select the card from the deck to turn over that shows the chart that corresponds to the values in the button bar. That's not how visualizations are done. So unlike charts, and actually I have a deck over here where I'm doing the same activity, but instead of turning over a card with a, a chart in it, I'm turning over a card with a list in it. I am not doing that with a visualization. I put visualizations in and I filter the visualization using the variables that are set by other controls. So I need to set the filter property for this particular visualization so that it's filtered by region and product line. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the container filter. And I'm going to add that the product line matches the product line variable that the buttons up, uh, over here on the right that you can't see popular. And, because it's got to be, it's got to match both, that the region matches the region variable data that these buttons up here at the top pop in. So if I click on a region, it drops which region I clicked on in this variable. Then it filters the visualization so the data it shows matches my region and my product line that I've selected. So that's all active report specific stuff in terms of how I connect items on an active report page. Now, in an active report, I have a cool option that I'm going to turn on. And that cool option is animation. Because the Rave Engine is embedded in the MHT file that the active report creates, um, I can, it, 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 and it therefore renders this visualization on the fly, I can turn on an animation property. So it will actually make the, uh, the visualization uh, even more eye-catching. So I'm going to select the visualization, and I'm going to go for animation effect. I'm going to go ahead and use transition. Uh, you see there's, there's several different options here. I happen to like transition with this bubble chart. So there you have it. I am ready to rock. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, run this report and test it out. So uh, I'll still have the same buttons across the top. I'll still have the lists on the side that show me uh, revenue and gross profit. But now I'm also going to have on the left-hand side, a clustered bubble. And as I change my buttons here, you'll see the animation effect that I was talking about. Now, does the animation teach me anything new about the data? No. It's eye-catching, though, right? And sometimes the hurdle to get over and in introducing a new report to an audience is not necessarily um, uh, 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 anything more than getting them to actually try it, 
and use it. And if an uh, animation on a visualization entices somebody to actually try out the report and learn to appreciate the actual data that's on it, well, that's a really good thing. So for me, the business value of the animation is to getting people to, is enticing people to use the active report that you spent so much time building and actually leverage the data that is presented in the visualization. So um, you don't have to turn on animation. As you saw, there is a property for animation of none. So you don't need to. Um, but if you wanted to, in an active report, you have that option. Now, this active report is about three and a half minutes. And you might say to yourself, wow, if I had done a bar chart over here, you know, would it have been three and a half minutes? No, it actually would have been small. Um, the, the notion of your MHT file size being smaller than if you use the chart engine is really um, a matter of uh, how many charts you have. As the number of charts goes up, right, the size of your uh, MHT file increases uh, almost in a linear fashion. So the more charts equals the bigger size of the MHT. Not so with visualizations. The Rave engine takes up a certain amount of space, one. And that's, you know, an, you know, on the order of a magnet and a half, let's say, right? And then each visualization, though, takes up a tiny amount of space because it's just instructions to the Rave engine. It's not the actual image itself. So as you add more and more visualizations, the size of the file increases, but increases at a much slower rate than the size increase would be if you used charts and decks. Mm -hmm. So you will get much smaller visualization MHT files because uh, uh, of, the, of that. But at some point, right, they stay larger than charts. So if you have one or two charts, it's going to be smaller than a visualization. But once you get into five or six charts on a, on a data deck with 20 or 30 cards, the MHT files with the visualizations in them um, will be much smaller than the equivalent uh, MHT file that used the chart engine, right? So you, there's a pivot point where um, the, the uh, visualization MHT will start out bigger, but will then be smaller as you make a much more sophisticated active report. So I just wanted to make sure that that was clear um, as far as the sizing goes. So that's the active report visualization story. Now, I've actually already saved um, this report uh, as active report final, and I pre-run it. Um, and the reason for that is because I'm going to use this active report in a Cognos workspace, but I'm just going to run it here to show you. It's the very same report I just wrote. Um, it's just been pre-run so that I can use it uh, later in our demo for Cognos uh, workspace. But what I'm going to do first is I'm going to actually edit uh, a starter report in Cognos workspace advanced. Whoops, that would not be CWA. That would. I'm going to open it up in CWA, and I'm going to show you visualizations in CWA, um, but I'm, and I'm going to do it now in a, a, a regular report, if you will, a standard report, not an active report. So here I've got a, a, a report that has a uh, prompt in it. Uh, CWA aficionados know that prompts uh, in active report, uh, and prompts in report pages don't run in Cognos Workspace Advanced. They don't work. They don't actually, but they, they show up but you can't actually use them in CWA unless you run as a consumer. So here is that prompt. And all this prompt is doing is it's rerunning the report with an optional filter that filters by region if I've specified a region. Okay? So that's what the prompt is for. Um, but I can also have nothing in the prompt and have it give me a grand total across uh, all regions. So that's what this report is doing. And I'm in CWA and I'm going to add a visualization to my report in CWA. So same basic process, go to my toolbox, find the visualization tool, drag it to the position I want in my report. And all the things you know about layout, like putting things into blocks or putting things into table cells, those all still apply in terms of laying out uh, reports with visualizations, absolutely. I'll use a tree map by category, just so I use a different one than the one we saw already. And I'll drop that in to my report. And now I've got my drop zones up that I have to populate. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and add to my uh, visualization from my model. So I'm going to go ahead and do a product cost measure. And I'll drop in the product cost. And I need a, uh, uh, three categories. And earlier I said that things don't render until all of the drop zones have been filled in. 
So you'll see that once I drop in the last level, then Cognos Workspace Advanced will render the visualization with my data. So I'm going to start out by category level one being product line. And uh, category level two, I'm going to make, uh, let's say, year close date. And category level three, I'm going to make um, uh, region, uh, which, as I recall, is under results. So now I will get a rendering of my uh, tree map. So let me just click off of that so you can see it. So here's a, a tree map with a product line first. So it gives me a collection of boxes in a color for level one. And then it breaks down the boxes by level two, which is time, and then breaks those boxes down by level three, which is region. Okay? Now, this prompt is for region, right? And I want to be able to select the region and have it filter my visualization. So I'm going to have to update the query for this visualization to use the parameter. So when I run it, uh, it will render a different visualization as I pick a region. You see right now, it doesn't uh, pay attention to the prompt. I have to fix that. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take a look at the filters that are on my uh, um, existing object, which is region is P region is the name of the parameter. So I want to make sure I want to make sure that this um, is the same filter that I put on my visualization object. So I'm going to select my visualization object. I'll go to my filters. Um, and I will create a custom filter. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't notice the option there. All right, there it is. So create a custom filter. I'm going to, um, actually I'm going to do it a different way. And that's because I need to select what I'm going to filter on, which is region. Um, now if I create uh, a custom filter, it will come up for region. So there are my regions. I need to make this a parameter. So I'm going to do P region, which is the name of the parameter that's being used in the other filter. All right, so now this will run for a specific region, right? And it has to be the exact same parameter, including case and spelling. Um, so let me just check that, P capital R, and this guy. Why can't I see my, oh, that's fine. No. Hmm. Well, I'm not going to waste your time looking for the right place to click to check it. I'm pretty confident. Nope, I didn't do it. And the reason, because I, I'm getting this, um, so I don't believe this is going to change this guy down here. Nope, it's not. So I must have misspelled the parameter. Um, you know, so there you go. Live demo, ladies and gentlemen. Live demo. Um, oh, you know what? Well, let's see. Um, filter. Edit filters. Region. P region. So it's lowercase p, capital R, region. And here it is. Interesting. Um, well, I didn't make it optional, so I do have to change that. Um, oh, and there's that silly, it's not letting me edit my filters thing. Um, Let's make it optional. I may have to go into Report Studio to make this work. Yeah, this is the uh, you know live demo. No, I got it right. I just didn't make it optional. Great. So, all you out there who were saying, Rich, you didn't make it optional. That's why you got the generated prompt. Thank you. I eventually heard you. Someone actually did that. 
Yeah, so I eventually did hear you even though I didn't, I can't see the chat window. Um, there you go. So um, CWA rendered using a, a, a prompt. Great, it's updating both of my objects. Standard normal report. I can download this guy as a JPEG, just like I can a uh, uh, any chart that's rendered. Right, so there's the JPEG I just downloaded. So just like I can download any chart JPEG. So very similar, very similar to um, uh, what I get with a chart, um, but I get a whole different way of looking at the data. Um, actually, 30 different ways of looking at the data. And you see it even has the, the callouts that tell you what each box represents, right? And, you know, and if I go back to all regions, right, it'll actually, uh, um, you know, the callouts contain all of the data you need to understand. So that's a visualization in a CWA report. Uh, as well as a, uh, a quickie on uh, how you get uh, optional prompts to work in CWA. Um, there you go. Now, this is a relational package. This is not a drillable package, right? It's not based on a cube. I'm going to write a report that uses the same visualization, but I'm going to do it from cube data so I can show you um, how drill down works uh, on a visualization. So that's what I'm going to do next. So I'm going to go ahead and save this report. And I'm going to start a new report. I'm going to do this in Report Studio. And I'm going to use Go Data Warehouse Analysis, which is an OLAP package. Now, I'm not going to put prompts in it or anything like that. Um, uh, I'll actually uh, use this in my Cognos workspace, workspace example, and I'll drop a filter in the workspace uh, rather than dropping in a, uh, uh, a filter here. So I'll create a new report. I'm going to do a blank report. Uh, there is no pre-built uh, visualization template, so I'll do a blank report. It'll load up my dimensional package. Eventually. Now, the point here is that I'm going to be using a dimensional um, uh, uh, source, and I'm going to turn on drill down in this report. So that's that's why I'm building this other report. So it's going to be very similar to the last one. The only difference is I'm using a, a an OLAP model. So I'll go ahead and I'll make it exactly the same, actually. I'll go ahead and I'll use um, product cost as my measure. Now, I want you to pay particular attention to level one, two, and three here, because it's going to be important from a drilling perspective. So I'm going to make level one product line. So I'll grab the product line level and drop that into level one. I'm going to make a level two region. So I'm going to grab uh, from retailers. So I'm going to grab the region level. And I'm going to make level three time. So keep in mind when we run this that level three is time. All right. So I'm going to, uh, uh, so I'm done. I'm actually done. The report's written. Uh, no different than writing a, a quick unfiltered um, chart report, right? A couple of three drops and you're done. The thing I'm going to make sure I do, though, is I'm going to enable drill behavior in this report. All right. I've done that. I'm going to save my report. And I'll call this uh, a drill example. And now I'm going to run this report. So I'll run it as a consumer. It's going to render my um, visualization. By the way, these are sizable. There's a size and overflow property on these. You can make them bigger or smaller so you can have them fit in the space. I didn't set any sizes, so it sized itself. Okay. Um, now, if I click on a box, you'll see that it drilled on the time dimension. Why? Because the time dimension was level three in my drop zone. So if I click on another box, it's going to drill down to the quarters on that box. And if I drill down to another box, I get to the months in that quarter, right? Now, if I right click, I can do my drill up. OK, but how do I drill on the region to get to, say, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the countries in Central Europe. Well, if I right-click, 
You'll notice on drill down, I have options for drilling on the level one and level two items, right? So, you know, um, in a chart, I would be tempted to drill on capping equipment by clicking over here, and this would drill on capping equipment in a chart. Not so in a visualization, okay? If I right click and I do drill down, um, and, uh, or I just click to drill, it's drilling on level three in this chart. Um, if I'm gonna drill down on capping equipment, I actually have to right click and select it there. See, now I've got sleeping bags and lantern, and I can do that for all of the countries in Asia Pack, and then I can drill on my different levels, right, based on, um, Uh, drill down. I actually drilled up on Asia Pac and drill down on Asia Pac. And there you go. Um, and now it'll do it by country. All right. So building a visualization is very uh, simple, whether it's a dimensional package or a relational package. But when you get to the drilling part, it's hidden behind the right click, um, which is not necessarily obvious. So adding a visualization to a workspace. No different than adding a visualization or adding a chart to a workspace or anything else to a workspace. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll go into Cognos Workspace. I'll create a new workspace. I will create a very sophisticated one to give us some time for questions. So let me just grab that visualization I created where it's drillable, and I will add him to my workspace. And up he comes. And he's drillable here, and that all still works. But I also want to filter this guy. So I'm going to filter this guy by um, year. So I only pick uh, certain uh, certain years or regions or whatever. Um, any visible item on this chart can be uh, immediately filtered by going to the toolbox and workspace and dragging over a filter. I'll drag over a select value filter. I click on time close date um, um, because I dragged over uh, the wrong element. I didn't drag over the uh, the level I must have dragged over the hierarchy. Um, it's not giving me individual years, but I'll, so I'll click on region and do it with region. Um, so now I've got a quick filter. So if I want, I can just filter on the regions that are interesting to me. And oh, by the way, I can still drill down on any of the axes. Okay. And active reports, um, if you need to add an active report to a, uh, a workspace, I'm not quite sure what happened there. There, oh, that's why. Um, if I uh, create a new tab and I go and I drag on, if you want to add an active report to a workspace, um, it has to have been pre-run. Um, active reports don't get run live in workspaces, so that's why I had the pre-run one out there, but here I've got that active report with the visualization on it. And oh, by the way, it is still rendering live and will still animate, even though it's in a workspace. And on this tab, right, I have a live report. Every time I hit apply here, it's rerunning the query and it's generating uh, the uh, the item. This doesn't have um, the ability to do the animate, right? But either way, I can use visualizations on a workspace. So there you go, that's the demo that I had in mind. And uh, now we'll take some questions. All right, thanks, Chris. A lot of content there. Um, there's a lot of questions that came in with context. So some of these sure. might be hard to pick up because, because you're going to have to remember exactly what you're talking about at that point in time. Um, so when you were just drilling down, someone asked a question about do you have to have a cube behind the scenes to support it? So drill up and drill down. Okay, that. so that the independent of visualizations. Uh, a report that drills is based on an OLAP data source. An OLAP data source could be a dimensionally modeled relational database, so not a queue. It could be a dynamic queue, which is a memory uh, resident version of your data uh, um, that is uh, a cube in memory. Uh, TM1 would fall into the same category there. Or it could be a physical cube like uh, an SSAS cube, a PowerPlay cube, an SPACE cube. It cannot be a relational package. So I can format my relational data using a technique called DNR and make it drillable in the framework manager model. But straight up relational data, rows and columns, tables and columns, that's not drillable. 
I have to have formatted it into an OLAP model using VMR or converted my relational data into a cube, whether that's a memory resident cube like VM1 or a physical cube like the power. Okay. Then it's drillable. And only if I turn it on like we saw me do. And there's a related question. How can I make the drill up and build out work on the that point? Yes. So in order to make it work, you have to author with an OLAP package, A, and B, you have to enable drilling for your consumers. So there's two steps. If you author with an OLAP package, but you don't enable drilling, when they run the report, it will not be drilled. Thank you. And then there's a related question from iPad. So any difference if you drill an up and down on an iPad? Um, how you drill on an iPad is very different because you don't have a mouse with a right click. Um, so the iPad drilling experience is, uh, is touch oriented. So while you'll have all the same options in terms of drilling, how you do it will be different on an iPad. And by the by, with the release of the latest fix packs for Cognos, server and mobile, there is now an iPhone uh, mobile native app, in addition to the iPad one and the Android one that have been out for a while. Yep. And, and it's been active reports and visualizations work on that. Yep. And we conducted a poll during during the presentation today, Rich, asking people what mobile apps are using mm -hmm. and other questions. We share the results with everyone so they can we won't go through the poll in detail. But you can see what other companies are currently leveraging mm -hmm. for mobile apps. The iPhone app literally just came out three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. So so that's just starting to get adopted. Well, since the, everybody that's watching had to suffer through me troubleshooting for two minutes, I'll go two minutes <laughs> over and answer more questions. How's that? As a fair trade. So so the, the next question is is almost like about licensing. So mm -hmm. so Ten to one to the advanced visualizations are included with your users. So if a user can be using Cognos Workspace Advanced to create a report, advanced visualizations is an entitlement they get. So right. another visualization type they have access. And all consumers can run reports with visualizations in them. So you know the Cognos Workspace Advanced report I wrote. If you have consumers, enhanced consumers, query users, every level of user who can log in and run a report can run a report with a visualization. Mm. Active reports require enhanced consumer at a minimum um, level. So visualizations or no, active reports require enhanced consumer. Visualizations are immediately available to all license levels in terms of running a report. Okay. What else we got there, Jesse? Great. A lot of more context sensitive, so I think it's going to be hard to try oh. to go address, address those. Let's right. give it a shot. I'll either, I'll either go down in flames or, or not. Um, so early in the presentation, or early in the demo, with the actively filtered list, can they be exported to Excel? That was a question that came up. Oh, so what happens if I export uh, to Excel uh, a report? You know, that's actually a real quick uh, demo that we can do. Um, so, you know, regular reports that you, you saw that I was able to download the um, the the image. So if I were to run um, my uh, CWA guy, which I actually saved over the top of Starter, and I said run this in Excel, okay, it will um, uh, run and render. And just like a chart from Cognos will render in Excel, um, visualizations do too. So here's the visualization in Excel. Um, but it is not a an Excel object. It is a JPEG embedded in the Excel file, right? So, you know, Excel doesn't understand um, uh, visualizations like it understands charts, right? So when you download um, a, a report with a chart in it, it becomes an Excel chart object. Not so. Visualizations are JPEG. Uh, another question is, is, is there a way to control the visualization for certain end users see? So Absolutely. So when you um, are in your uh, administration, whoops, when you're in administration and uh, you uh, are in your library, each visualization has a uh, property sheet. And you can uh, uh, secure, using standard security techniques, um, visualizations so that only certain groups have access to them. Do be careful, though. Um, you know, if you just give them to your authors, when your consumers go to run them, they won't be able to run them. Right, so you do, you know, it's like any security change, you've got to keep in mind the end-to-end -end implication of making a security change. 
But visualizations are uh, um, securable like any other object in Kotlin is secure, um, including for those of you uh, who are set up as multi-tenant, making them tenant specific. So if you are to author visualizations that were specific to a tenant's needs, you could make them, uh, you could secure them uh, to a specific tenant if you wanted. Okay. Um, during the poll, Rich, I was, I was surprised that the vast majority of people actually would like to learn more about the visualization customizer. I cool. believe it's something that they're leveraging their organization. Mm -hmm. So, so I think for a future event, that's certainly something that we should, uh, try to address. Sounds like a webinar. Yeah. Uh, there was a question on modifying a visualization, specifically changing the legend location or a font type. They don't specify which visualization they want mm -hmm. to modify. Yeah, but, but all of them have properties around that. Um, if I reopen my visualization customizer, um, so I, I can just quickly illustrate this. Let me open, um, let me open the one, the one that we were using there, which is the tree map color by category. If I remember correctly, um, and, uh, you know, ladies and gentlemen, live demo, um, the, uh, the title, um, yeah, so the fill, let's see, uh, as I recall, right in here, there's like a, a legend position. So one of the value, the value set here is right. So if I wanted to move it, I could change this uh, this value right here, save this package it, upload it, and now it's moved to wherever I specify. So that is absolutely part of this biz JSON, as it controls the entire look and feel of the uh, 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 the element, it includes uh, even when you, whether or not it's animatable, mm -hmm. okay? All right. Um, All right. This will have to be the last question. Is there anything left? Uh, font values. Can you override the font? Um, if you mean in the report itself, as opposed to in the, the customizer, let's say you're not a customizer type person, you are uh, uh, an author, um, and, and what this is really getting to is, well, what are the, what are the properties that I can play with on the visualization, right? You know, can I, you know, can I do drill groups? Um, can I do master detail relationships? What are, what are my options here? Sorting. Right, yeah. right. Another question. Yeah, so, um, you know, if I pick the measure, um, you'll see that I can deal with um, uh, the ranges, um, just like I can with charts. So I can, I can do uh, whether a range includes zero or not, how, uh, how things are labeled, right? If I, uh, and I can change formatting uh, um, on a, uh, on, on an item. Um, on my um, my levels, right, and uh, you know, there's a the, the data container, right, contains the levels. So the data container is where my master detail relationships are, right, and also where I would put any drill throughs that I wanted to add. Um, on the uh, I've got sorting and data format on each level, so I can change the sort um, or the data format on each level. Um, in terms of uh, font, um, I do not recall seeing a, um, a font property on the visualization. Um, and data format does not include font, um, as Report Studio people know. So it may be, I would have to test this, I haven't specifically tested font, yep. um, but it may be that uh, you can't. If you could, my suspicion is that these uh, options up here would be turned on, since there, I, there's nothing I can select right now that seems to be turning on those options, and if I go to the um, uh, page structure, so I can see even more items to click on, um, see if any of these turn on. I am, yeah, I don't believe the tree map will inherit the change in the cell. Um, that'll be fun to try. I mean, you're on for a reason. Let me just change um, <laughs> my uh, sizes to something dramatically uh, different here, and let me just run this report and see whether it inherited it from the table. So I don't think it will. Um, I, I believe that the font properties are not supported by the visualization here, as you can see them. Yeah, which if it's inside, I think they're solid, you could understand that, but you would think it, you might be able to get the font family or something. Yeah, okay. um, but uh, it's not. No, um, again, I mentioned earlier, you can resize um, these guys. So, you know, you could make them smaller. So not every um, property we're used to is available on this. All right. All right. The time is now 106. We appreciate everyone attending today. Uh, be sure to go to lpa.com events to register for our upcoming webinars.
and we'll send a follow-up email to everyone who registered for this event with a playback URL. Uh, if you have any additional questions, again, you can respond to that email or email us directly with those questions, and we'll do our best to follow up on each. Um, also, any of you that requested some of the additional visualizations, uh, we'll get those out to you in the coming day. All right. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a great rest of your day.